Okay, I started recording. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our next industry guest talk. Um, oh, today we are very much pleased and honored to have Jessica Miller hosting uh, uh, be hosting Jessica Miller for our industry guest speaker. Let me grab my phone because a lot of my brain is outside <laughs> my body. <laughs> so um, when I read through the very, uh, well, unfortunately, we could only fit few of um, your amazing journey into the poster of the talk. I'm sure you will talk us through that yeah. today, but your um, journey makes us everyone envious. So, is there any <laughs> is there any um, big movie you have not been working on? <laughs> <laughs> so, like you know, in the list of the movies you've been part of, um, from the very like kind of um, yes, yeah, I've never like, worked on a Star Wars movie. Ah, oh, that's the one. Okay, yes. Okay. That would that would okay. be you know that could be in there. I reckon. Yeah, that would yeah, be, would yeah. make me happy. <laughs> what, yeah, what a shame. So, so like um before uh, you uh, we uh, we hello new people online. So we have more people joining us. Um before you we had the pleasure of hosting Tristan uh, oh, cool. multiple times from ATD Perfect. here at at um. Uh, AUT, um, we are very pleased to have you as the head of ATD. Uh, I'm sure you will take us through what it is and what it does. Um, Jessica has been in the industry for 20 years, worked on multiple um, positions um, in uh, UK, Australia, and now in New Zealand. Um, she is a teacher as well. So, and uh, what is very valuable, I think, um, you know, we need more of you in the industry, the people who care. So like, I don't know where, uh, what's the roots, like maybe you be a, a, a mother, but like the people who care for the others and like help them to grow and find their roots and place in the industry. Um, that is an amazing, I think it's it's an amazing experience and an amazing um, job, <laughs> you know, which um, uh, we we really appreciate. I don't take too much of um, your time and I would like you to start and tell us more about yourself, your journey, what you do, what is ATD and uh, like how these amazing students could be part of your team. Absolutely, I would love to. Okay, so let me start by sharing my screen. Uh, I am going to share this one, so you should all see it by now. Let me know if you don't. Um, right, so first of all, thank you very much, Hossein, for inviting me uh, to come and speak to your students. It's always, um, a privilege to come and talk and um, and it also gives me a chance to practice my speaking and my PowerPoint making skills and um, and and also gives me a chance to talk to you and say what you um, want to hear what you what your questions are and and I always hope if I just inspire one person that is choosing a path in VFX, then my job is done. So that's great. So thank you. So um, Hossein asked me to share a little bit about my path, which is always, you know, I'm, I'm not super comfortable talking about myself, but so it's always a little bit like, ooh, cringe, but but I'll try my best. And 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 as I said, it's it's to to inspire you, I hope. So um i'm calling my slideshow uh, an ever evolving path so um, what a beautiful name <laughs> yeah. yes so i wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you um 
and to glance back a little bit in time and explore what the challenges have been that I've faced, but also the more so probably the learnings that I've made and what things have changed over time and what things haven't really changed. And hopefully that will give you an insight into what to expect when you come into this industry or once you leave university, those kind of things. So let's start here on this beautiful map. Um, it starts in a very small village in South Germany, which is where I'm from. Uh, I was never really particularly good at school, but I did have a really good eye for art. And uh, while I wasn't myself, you know, the next sort of um, great painter and, and draw, but I did love the stories that paintings and drawings and colours could convey, I suppose. Um, I particularly really loved music and with that music videos, I just watched like MTV all day and just marveled at, you know, the beautiful pictures. And um, some of the movies that I watched did have some effects in it, but I wasn't really aware of that at the time. One of my first experiences of uh, blue screen and what a matte painting was, was going to the Bavaria film studios with my parents and uh, watching how they made um, The Never Ending Story. I don't know if anyone's oh my ever God. seen that oh, movie. That was, or... <laughs> yeah, that was one of my favorite childhood stories. I watched yes. it multiple times and yes. I watched the behind the scene and yeah. all the hard work they did for that. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's so fascinating. Hey? And I just couldn't believe like in the studio that you could you could <laughs> sit on the, was it the Luck Dragon? in front of a blue screen and then on a monitor you they you know took the blue screen away and they put like the sky behind it and I was just like wow it looks like I'm flying through the sky it was super fascinating but I didn't really understand it all too well or I didn't it didn't make me go like oh wow this is what I want to do you know but looking back in hindsight it's an interesting piece of of the puzzle I suppose um so when I came to studying time, I didn't really know what I wanted to study. I just knew that I didn't really want to do anything to that involved a lot of essay writing because I wasn't very good at writing essays. And um, I wanted to do something more practical and art related. I wanted to do something future technology related and something media communication uh, related. And at the time in Germany there wasn't um, many courses that were being offered that I thought I would either stay a standard chance of getting in there or um, that I wanted to do. So I looked at England and I looked at courses around England and which in my mind had a way more progressive um, courses to offer um, you know, like media design and 3D product design, which I was just like, whoa, what? You make like 3D products on a computer? That's amazing. And um, so I went ahead and applied to six different courses in England. Um, I didn't get into my first choice uh, and I did get into my second choice. And that was that course was called virtual reality design. And <laughs> so this is 20 years ago. And um, I didn't really know what that all meant, but it sounded really cool. And I sort of had this idea that I would be looking something like this, that I would wear this helmet and that I'll basically play games and create products in 3D all day long. That's what I sort of thought I'd be doing in this course or learning. Uh, what I did actually learn was, yes, I did make a 3D uh products and designs i did do architectural walkthroughs oh there's someone that needs to turn off there okay oh, i'll i'll mute i've muted them it's all good oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um yes so i created some virtual reality um interactive games and implemented them into the web browser i learned how to program c plus plus and write web pages in hdm and learn things like uh, flash and all those things and some architectural programs as well but one of my favorite papers was actually 3d animation and i was really fascinated how you could 
create anything, really, any story that you can possibly think of and make it in 3D. And that, to me, was just, like, mind-blowing, you know. Um, that particular paper was based in 3D Studio Max, and um, the teacher that we had was actually uh, an, uh, an art teacher, had an art background, which I feel like really helped. And so a few things happened while I was in a university. First of all, um, this movie came out. This is actually Toy Story 2 that came out. But I didn't take much notice, notice of Toy Story 1. But then when I was at university and studying it, I was like, ah, OK, now I understand this. And, and that was sort of a turning point for me um, in the way that I saw how my skills could fit in to something. And then another movie came out in my second years of study. And when this came out, like all the cinemas were completely booked out and I managed to get like the seat in front row and I was literally like sitting there like this, looking at the big screen <laughs> and I just needed to see it. And I was like completely blown away by the effects and the grandeur of the whole thing. And, and that was to me a defining moment where I knew that that is what I wanted to do and and that is where I wanted to go eventually. So um, as virtual reality design, my bachelor didn't really give me the portfolio that I needed to be working in visual effects. I followed up my bachelor with a master's degree and um, and stayed in England and did the master's degree in visual uh, digital effects, I believe, uh, which was heavily be based in Houdini and Shake, which is a, a 2D compositing program that was before the industry standard before Nuke, actually. Gr grandfather of Nuke, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, yeah, I really loved this course. I mean, it was just like showing me everything that I really wanted to know. It showed me how to film, how to make HDRIs, how to film blue screen screens, how to, you know, take a K, how to model, animate something in 3D, how to composite it all together. And, um, and that is exactly what I wanted to do. So that was great. And we all was because it was a master's, we all were very passionate about it um, because it did the course itself cost a lot of money. So everyone took it very serious to be there. And um, now that I knew my path, I also looked up all the companies around the world and in London, of course, which is where I was close to anyway, but also elsewhere. And I made sure that I finished my master's project early so I could apply to all the companies before everyone else finished their degree. <laughs> um, out of the around 20 applications that are sent out to various studios around the world, um, I got one answer and I got one interview. Um, I am not sure what ha would have happened if I didn't have that one answer and one interview, but this whole story could have been completely different. But, you know, I took it and I went to the interview and I said yes to whatever the person wanted me to say yes to. <laughs> and um, and I got to work on a movie called Troy at a company called Moving Picture Company, which is probably a company that you all heard of because it's quite yeah, big MPC. now. Yeah. MPC. Back then, MPC was literally a company in Soho, in London. Yeah. We were between 100 to 150 people. And this was one of their first major movie awards. Um, and it was directly off the back of uh, Lord of the Rings, which had come out. And of course, for Lord of the Rings, they invented the crowd system that everyone was just like, wow, what? Like artificial intelligence, like crowd simulations and stuff. So all these movies came out afterwards where each of the visual effects companies basically wrote their own crowd simulations. So this was MPC's crowd simulation movie. Um, my first job was camera tracking. Um, which I did for almost two years. 
uh, I didn't really want to be a camera tracker. I actually wanted to be a uh, effects TD. At this, by this point, I was really, really into anything like snow and dust and water and rain because of my Houdini background. I was just like particle simulations. This is what I want to do. And while I obviously had to do all my tracking for all these shots and stuff, I tended to walk over to the effect cities and go, can I put some effects into any of these shots for you? <laughs> and they were like, yeah, sure, you can do this one. So I don't know, you probably haven't noticed, but if you look closely at this beautiful dust that's like coming off in plumes in the background there, that's me. I did that. <laughs> Very proud. No one would, no one would ever know. <laughs> ah, you did it like without them asking you. Yeah. Ah, oh, exactly. smart, smart. Yes. Well, yeah. no, I did ask them. I did ask. I did oh, okay. ask whether I could do it, but I did it in my after I finished all my camera tasks. So I finished my camera oh, tasks faster. Beautiful. So Fast I could one. work on the effect stuff. And so from there, I um got got into being an effects TD, a junior effects TD, and I was privileged enough to work on this movie. And while you might think that I was able to like create this beautiful drool here coming off um, the alien, that wasn't me. But see this little bit of like debris and snow coming off over here? That's me. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. So I did a few shots in in um, Avatar, uh, Avatar in Alien versus Predator, yeah. uh, creating little snow um, snow simulations. Uh, one of the next shots that I worked on was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I uh, wasn't really into Harry Potter much at the time, but I've got total bragging rights now to my children who are very much into Harry Potter and so I'm like yeah I worked on that I'm cool I'm, I'm still not cool to them but hey um <laughs> yes so I did this flare that's coming out of his uh wand and I did the dust and the and the um dust and what's it called fog that's lying on top of the hedge uh, then the company needed someone to do some crowd simulation on a movie called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And at the time, I was hugely into um, Tim Burton. absolutely adored all of his quirky, yeah. kooky movies. And so I was absolutely stoked to be able to work on that. And all these, like these foreground Oompa Loompas, they're... Um, they're plate based, but all the ones in the background that you see, they're all CG uh, using wow. the crowd simulation program. And that was what my job was on this particular movie. And I know all the songs inside out. And when my <laughs> when my kids got into watching this movie and they wanted to hear the music, I was just like, no. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> And then I got to work on Batman, um, creating crowd simulation for bats. Again, not those foreground ones, but those background one here. But, um, you know, it's still pretty cool. Um, and then I was asked, then I worked on this movie called Sunshine, and it's it was a little bit of a pivot time for me because I, I was asked to do previous on this movie. Mm -hmm. And, and, it wasn't really something that I had thought about before, but it was purely because of my experience in the camera department that that I was asked to come up with camera movements for the spaceship um, sequences in this movie. And um, so I said, yes, sounded pretty interesting. I was like, why not? I actually got to uh, work on set and I actually got to work with the director, uh, Danny Boyle uh, oh, on those previous sequences so it was super super interesting and um, I don't think you know if I hadn't done the match moving camera tracking experience in the beginning that I thought wasn't really my thing I don't think I would have had this um, opportunity come at me so um, I think working on previous is 
uh, very rewarding because you contribute to the highest level of the creative side of the production yes. and like kind of like you know feed into the the initial yeah uh, formation of the of the movie yes it's a very creative process um very fast paced um you know really quick iterations and um yeah it can be very rewarding um i really really love this experience but through this experience i actually realized that i really liked lighting and it lighting. wasn't really a department that i was super aware of before i came to when I came out of university, I always thought it's just a necessity of lighting things up, I suppose. But this movie really showed me the impact on storytelling that lighting can have. And so that was to me was where I broke free of doing effects, but wanting to get into lighting. Um, I... After I did this movie, I actually changed companies and I went to Double Negative in London after this. Um, there was a few reasons for that. I had been three years at MPC and I wanted to try out a different company. I wanted to, you know, you sort of, after a while you know everything and not everything, but but like, you know, a lot of the workflows and stuff. And I wanted to challenge myself again. And there's a lot of different companies in London that you can go to. And I wanted to look around, I suppose. And so I went to Double Negative for a year and I worked on a movie called Kingdom, Kingdom of Heaven, which I don't have a gift for. But yes, so I did that for a year. And then after that, I actually really, I, I still had this dream in my head of like going to Weta, you know, that was still, that was always in the back of my head. And I always looked at the requirements of being able to work there. And it was like, you have to have at least five year of movie experience. So I was like, okay, building this up, building this up. So next thing I did was I got myself a job in Sydney. A uh, couple of reasons for that. For that, a I wanted to be closer to New Zealand, <laughs> and step by step, <laughs> step by step, working my way. But uh, but also I always wanted to go to Australia. I'd never been, you know, it was like this faraway land um, that I really wanted to explore. And I was like, well, I can work there and I can explore this country. So you know, why not do this? So I did that and. Um, I worked at a company called Rising Sun Pictures and on this movie uh, called The Ruins, which went straight to DVT, DVD, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, it's like this really little horror movie flick about these um, carnivorous vines that basically eat up these students that get lost in the in the jungle <laughs> um yeah it was huge fun um i got to work on another movie called australia and i also got to work on a movie with adam an adam sandler movie that i can't actually remember the name of i think it was like gumballs or something like that anyway um but the other thing I got to do in Australia was I got to work on some commercials, which is also something that I really wanted to try out and hadn't done before. And yeah, so I did that for about six months and decided that wasn't quite for me and that I definitely wanted to stick in the movie side. Um, righto. Next step, the Finally. dream place. <laughs> the dream. So... That was, you know, that was like from Australia coming to New Zealand. I mean, I'm pretty much like pretty much when those five years were up five, I had like five years of experience in my pocket. I send in that that email, that application to where I'm like, here I am. I've got my five years of experience. Now give me a job sort of thing. <laughs> Here's my showreel. Um, didn't quite happen for a little bit because I was a little bit too early for them needing people. I mean, that happens, you know, it's not always a requirement um, to hire people. So I had to wait for a little bit. So I traveled around Australia and pretty much spent all my money and was hoping that there was going to be a job at the end because otherwise I would be very, 
poor person. Um, luckily there was, and that was on this beautiful movie. And this is one of my first shots that I did at, um, at Weta, uh, which is obviously the first Avatar movie. Um, the learning curve coming from the other companies to Weta was insane. Um, there was no introduction to their workflows or anything. It was like, here's a, a sheet of paper. This is our workflow. Try this. And I pretty much by step three, I realized that everything that was written down on that piece of paper was too old and wasn't working anymore. So, so I had to dig in and ask questions and find my way through. And yeah, basically, I remember the time feeling very overwhelmed. Um, I do remember crying in the bathroom. Oh. Um, but did I dig in and learn, learn, learn until I was able to crack it? Yep, I did. And and it was worth it. Like by the end of, I worked on this movie for about six to eight months, I want, I want to say. And while this the initial step was really, really hard, it then got easier and easier and I got used to it and I got into it and and I had fun and I learned so much and it was truly an amazing experience. Um, I was able to work on a few of their other movies like this one Tintin which I didn't find a gift for but I found a picture of a shot that I worked on. Um, this was so much fun this project um, mainly because it was all CJ, and so we could just come come up with our own um, lighting rigs, you know, and our own stuff. There were no restrictions. We didn't have to put it into a plate and and match what was what was filmed on set. We could just um, be very creative, and that was really really cool. I really enjoyed this. Um, I. As I went through the years, I suppose that when I honed down on my craft and worked on many more movies like this one, like Hunger Games, and I got given more and more hero shots like this one um, that I was allowed to light um, that I felt super proud of. Um, right, so enough of the gifts. Here are some of the learnings that I made in the first 10 years. Um the pathway is definitely unpredictable and unexpected. Um, you should and have to define your own life because no one else is going to do it for you and you shouldn't let other people even try to do it. Um, rejection is definitely part of it. Tears can be part of it, but it's what you make out of it. You know, it's there's definitely super frustrating times but if you don't let it crack you down, you know, and, and make you move away from it, but you turn it into something positive, then something positive will come out of it. Um, definitely hard work and grit. You need it. You're going to need it. <laughs> but it's fun, you know, because it's rewarding and you feel successful. Um, I have always believed that if you're willing to learn, you can achieve anything. And I do believe that nothing in my whole path was was given to me, you know, purely on goodwill or whatever. You know, everything I've done, I've worked hard for and and I was I sat down and I had a good attitude towards learning. And um, and I feel like that is what brought me forward. Um, communication is key, like not just, and I don't mean like chatting to everyone, but, I mean, that's fun too, but, but also making yourself heard and making, um, what you want to do known to the people around you. Like when I was working on, on Troy and I wanted to be an effects TD, you know, like talking to the people around me and going like, hey, what are you doing? That looks really interesting. I would like to be a fake CD one day, you know, like, is there something I can help you with? Um, 
it goes so much and people are generally there to help you know no one's going to go oh no why would i help you that's that's not how people are in companies like most of the people are super helpful and want want juniors to succeed you know um there's no i in team and i I would say that any company that you go to, you will be working in a team and there will be, you know, that it's always an effort of a group of people together. And so when you do a group project at university, it's one of the greatest things you can do, actually, because it really gives you a sense of what it is like when you come into the industry. Um, always be proactive. It's one of the top tips I suppose I can <laughs> give you. And be patient because every little, you know, every you might be doing match moving for a year or you might be doing this thing that you actually don't want to for a year. But in the grand scheme of things, it's only a year. And as long as you keep on doing all the other things, then good things will come in the end. And be humble. So um, beautiful. So now we're sort of at the 2013 is coming around the corner and there was a bit of a break in my path um, after 10 years, uh, pretty much, yeah, pretty much 10 years after starting at, uh, at MPC and then all the other companies, I, um, I had my first child with my husband oh, and <laughs> thanks. And at the time, I wasn't really sure whether I was going to go back to uh, the effects as the hours can be long. And my priority was to definitely raise our children and be there for them. It was a, quite a confusing time because, of course, raising our children was beautiful and wonderful. But I also had this a career that I wanted to get back to because I spent all this time studying and I worked so hard and and I wanted it to 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 keep going you know but with like with everything in life you have to be patient patient and proactive and um so i explored a few things that i thought i might be good at um, you know i looked into marketing i looked into freelancing i looked into teaching because one of the things that i did do at weta while i was a td there was i often helped with people that were coming into the company and getting them up with their workflow and stuff and I really enjoyed that actually and so I was thinking about teaching at university but the problem was I didn't know anyone at Vic University I didn't know anyone at Massey I didn't know how to get in there or how to go about it and this thing happened where I talked to someone from a marketing company because that was one of the things that I was exploring and they knew someone at Victoria who was the head of architecture. So I made an appointment with her and I went in there. And honestly, we were both lo looking at each other in this meeting, this head of architecture and me. And we're like, why are we here? Why are we talking to each other? And it was really, <laughs> really cool. Yeah, so, it was like, who so by that time, uh, yeah, by that time, Areto was not there, right? The, no, the, no, no. The, the department that like we see it now, it was not existing. There. No, that was not existing. Um, okay. Yeah, it was super awkward. However, what did happen is that she sent me an email a week later and said, I just heard about a spot coming up in the media design course. They need someone who can teach video, um, video um, editing. Um, maybe you'd be interested in I'm like, sweet. So I went and talked to the tutor for the video editing course. And they were like, can you teach uh, After Effects and Premiere? And I was like, yeah, I haven't really done that since university, but sure, okay, I can do that. And so I went home and refreshed my knowledge on those uh, software packages and, yeah, and started teaching um video editing, video production at uh, Victoria University, um, which was a lot of fun. And I think I taught I taught them more about storytelling via, via a camera angles and lighting than anything else, but I suppose that was what I 
was mm. into. So. <laughs> and then something else happened. Another door opened. Um, someone from when I called me and asked me whether I wanted to, whether I was interested in teaching um, new lighters coming into the lighting department at WEDA um, from, you know, from overseas. And they were having this new movie. It was called uh, The Big Friendly Giant. I was super excited. It was Steven Spielberg. And uh, and they wanted me to teach these um, newcomers how to how to light using what as proprietary software. Unfortunately, I had just committed to this university job and timing was so bad. So I did a little bit of um, talking backwards and forwards as opposed to to make both ends meet somehow because I wanted to both. And I, so I ended up actually doing both jobs at the same time uh, for about four to six weeks um, because, yeah, I wanted to do both. But, yeah, once my uni stint ended, I went back to Weta teaching um, new lighters um, about the workflow and lighting department. That job was um, part time and it was great for me for that reason, because it allowed me to be a mom and but also keep on working in the industry that I wanted to be working in. Um, so that job I did for quite some time, though I did have a, um, a one more child in the meantime as well and uh, took some time out. But I basically became the lighting department trainer. Um, until the end of Avatar, the second Avatar. Um, by that time, I got really involved with the ATD department and often taught the new recruits or the early entry artists in the ATD department how to light and how to render and anything else I knew and um, how to navigate the professional environment, I suppose. And it really filled my cup. I suppose mm. I was really excited for them and their journey. Um, it was really exciting seeing some of the students that I taught at university coming through to the ATD program. I should actually say that I I also taught another paper at at Victoria later on, and this one was with Raki and Reto uh, at MCC. Mm. So I I taught um, lighting and rendering at yeah. MCC. And uh, and seeing those students coming through to the ATD program and you know continuing on their journey was was just a wonderful thing for me. Um, yeah. So when, uh, as I said, I got involved with the ATD department quite a bit, and um, and Anna Middleton, who was the department manager for the ATD department in Tristan. Uh, we were already really good friends and and sometimes Anna and I would go for coffees and 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 I really wanted to work with them actually and and so again you know rather than not saying anything I thought stuff I'm just gonna say something <laughs> <laughs> so I did and I just put myself out there and, and and I let Anna know that you know if there was ever an opportunity of them you know wanting someone to come and work with them more closely I'd be really I'd be really keen to know about it and um, little did I know that Tristan was actually looking to move on from his hot role and um, become a, a full-time senior developer and when he did that and the hot role came free, of course, I applied and and I got the role. Yes. And it was great Fantastic. because I felt like it really combined all my passions. You know, it combined like the the my passion for visual effects, for movies, but also my passion for for teaching and coaching and really bringing in young talent into the VFX company and making that process a a better one from what I experienced you know when I first came so here are my learnings that I made in the last 10 years <laughs> um, <laughs> the pathway is still unpredictable and unexpected 
Um, you need to show up and you need to bring resilience with you because, you know, there's there's going to be peaks and there's going to be troughs. And no more crying in the, the bathroom? No more crying in the bathroom, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's only within the first 10 years, yeah. It is, yeah. it is. But there's still frustrations, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's it like, is. It's not yeah, like it's that. Really. There's still yeah. frustrating times. Yeah, yeah, um, true. But also, you know, when one door closes, another one opens. Another and, one I, Fantastic. and I'm a firm believer of that, you know. Um, you're never too old to set a new goal or dream a new dream. Yeah. And as Kim Rickard actually told you in your in her little presentation yeah. that she did to you, because she went through so many different stages as well, you know, that you can always the talk was never, fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, that was so good. And and you you don't stay in one career necessarily for, for 40 years. You know, there will be breaks in your path that you go left or you go right or you do something else, but it's okay. Um <clears throat> persistence and determination will pay off. Mm. Um yeah, just I don't I don't think I need to really explain that. Um uh, continuous learning curve. Yes, I mean I honestly believe that every every thing that I do, every job that I do, I I'm never like the best at it, you know. And and that's the beauty of it. You always learn, and you always and if you're always willing to learn, then 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 it's a beautiful process, and you will you can be proud of yourself. Um, no matter what it is, you know, whether it's becoming a mother or or having a job at McDonald's, like it doesn't matter what it is. There's always something you can learn. Um, even if someone shows me how to, like my daughter was showing me how to use Sketchpad the other day and how she was, <laughs> she was making layers. And I was like, that's awesome. I mean, of course I know how to make layers in Sketchpad. However, she showed me a shortcut that I didn't know about. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I didn't know about the shortcut. You know, there's always something that you learn um, if, you, if you're open to that. A career evolves all the time. Um, stay curious and respectful and proactive, patient and humble. And there's a gift for everything, even my whole career, as you've just seen. Mm. Years of studying and... Uh, working in the industry and um i can find all my shots at, as gifts online now which is as a funny thing <laughs> <laughs> so the next 10 years for me it's a secret or maybe i just don't know because it's still unpredictable uh but one thing that i definitely would like to do is to shape the vfx uh culture and the talent that we have within that which also means increasing the diversity Beautiful. Something I haven't talked much about, but obviously I am a minority in this industry. Um, I never felt like I had any disadvantages to because of that, but I definitely would like to see more ladies, more diversity across the board in our industry, and it's definitely something that I am striving um, in my department for. Um, I want to continue to collaborate with you guys, with the departments, with other companies, like whoever I can and facilitate those conversations around um, the things that I feel like will make a better the effects culture uh, overall in industry. And I want to continue to learn and grow and evolve through all of that. And I also want to make better PowerPoint presentations. I'm still working on that. Uh, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> like what you have prepared so far was was great. <laughs> okay, so I need your help because I can't achieve any of these things without you guys. So this is where you come in, the ATD program. And, ATD. you know, I do have to do this shameless plug, obviously, because why not? Um so what is the ATD program? If you haven't heard about it yet, then listen up, I suppose. 
So what we do in the ATD program is basically a, some people would describe it as a graduate program, but we don't only take in graduates, but we take, it's it's like an early entry um, development program, a junior development program maybe. Um, so what we do is we take in 10 to 30 ATDs on an annual basis and that you can be anything, you can be interested in anything, could be animation, could be modeling, could be compositing, rigging, effects, lighting, like you name it, or devving, you know, you're good at Python or C++, you want to get into software development, Unreal Engine. Uh, I mean, we don't do games, but we do do some interactive stuff and we do use um, real-time tools for that, um, like Unreal Engine. Um, so there's a little bit of everything, even production, you know, if you want to become a producer. I mean, yeah, the ATD program doesn't really do production, but there will potentially be a production program in the future. Um, anyway, so we try to take in 10 to 30 ATDs a year and we put them through two to three months of intensive training. And what that means is we don't necessarily show you how to use Houdini and Maya because you wouldn't know that already. But what we show you is we give you an overview of what the company is, you know, and what we do now, our workflows we use, we teach you how to use Linux and we show you a lot of our proprietary software and we show you how all the departments fit together to, you know, from, from like someone in a mocap suit to a finished picture at the end. Um, and during those two to three months intensive training, it's also like a really good time for Anna, who's the department manager of the ATDs and myself, to come and talk to you and ask you about your dreams and your aspirations and where you want to go and what you want to do and what you're good at and get to know you, you know, so we can then line up those experiences in those departments so say we talk to you and you go i really want to be an effects td then we go okay we're going to look at some alone in effects we're going to look at alone maybe in lighting maybe in uh r d like we'll look at all the departments that surround effects that will make you understand um, the whole pipeline around it and will ultimately make you a better artist. Um, and all the way through this whole thing, we offer you constructive feedback and mentorship. And um, <clears throat> the multidisciplinary experiences or loans, as I call them, they sort of tend to be anything between four to six months long each and you'll have multiple of them. So there'll be, you know, you might be in our department for two to three years before you find your forever department of where you want to go or be ready for it. Um, but it's a really cool thing to do because you get to experience so many different departments and so see so many different workflows and meet so many different people and really extend your work network. Um, but it also comes with its own strong mind hive of the ATDs itself. So all of our alumni ATDs that are still at the company, and there are about 80% of the people who have come through as ATDs are still at the company. And um, so it's quite a big uh, success rate, I suppose. Um, but they all still talk to each other on a daily basis, on teams or whatever. They're like so interconnected and it's a it's a beautiful thing because, you know, when I started at MPC, I just had me and myself and and I tried to get in there and try to do all these things. But you, the ATD program, you come in as a as a group and you have this instant bond with each other, which is really, really cool. It's almost like university, but like, you know, from there to there. And quite often there are groups of people that come in from AUT together or that come in from other tertiary institutions. Um, <clears throat> and they continue living together or being friends with each other and stuff. Um, 
here are some of the competencies that we look for in a recruit. And I'm not going to talk much about the skills that you need. Like, for example, you need to know how to use Maya or Houdini because you all know that. And and I am a firm believer that you can learn all that. You know, when I when I came out of university, my software was Houdini. And the first day I got to MPC, it was like, OK, here's Maya. And I was like, oh, crap, I'd never owned Maya before, you know. <laughs> but it's, you know, as long as you understand the concept of how to make a cube and know where to find the buttons, you'll be OK. But um, so in my mind, of course, you need to know how to make a cube, but it doesn't matter to me whether you can do it in Houdini or Maya or Blender or ZBrush or whatever, you know, as long as you understand the concept of what 3D is and what what rigging is and what animation is and what lighting is and what rendering is, you know, the, if you understand the concepts, it doesn't matter which which software you use. But what matters to me more are the competencies. And these are <clears throat> things like communication skills, you know, are you able to speak to your work and and are you able to talk about um, your progress of you know this this is my idea and this is where I ended up you know and these are the steps in between or are you able to talk to your fellow um, students or teachers or um, soups and leads a lot of a lot of the things that we do here at the company is is communicating with each other it's all down to communicating um great attitude and you know obviously like a certain positivity but also a can do attitude i suppose you know like like yeah okay maybe this is not exactly what i was hoping i would do but i'm going to do it anyway because it's going to lead to something else and um <coughs> whoops um you should be motivated and willing to learn. I think I've sort of made that point clear a little bit through my mm. presentation already. Um, that's all about, you know, being able to dig in and go, OK, I'm going to learn this thing. Um, proactive self-management. It's a lot of big words in there, but basically, you know, you are the person who is managing themselves and, and you are responsible for your own success and and you achieve that through being proactive um problem solving and critical thinking um this industry is all about problem solving because you will you know nothing is ever straightforward and as you probably know yourself because you're already doing it in your courses and in your projects that you do you know like how many how many walls do you come up to and, and go like, ah, oh, OK, that wasn't quite how I thought this was going to go. This is an issue. Okay, what am I going to do? You know, are you able to think outside the box and go, oh, OK, can I can I look at it from a different angle or what can I do to solve this thing? It's a really great skill to have. Um, be curious, resilient and task focused. Um, curiosity is a great skill because, because not everything will always be positive and amazing. But if you are curious about it and you, you look at it from a different angle and go, OK, what else can I get out of this? How can I how can I look at this? How can what can I get out of it? How can I turn it into something positive for me? Or what can I learn out of it? You know, it's a it's it's a life skill, really. It's not just really about work, you know, it's like how I guess you know it's life and in general. Um we really love people who are inclusive and conscientious team players. As I said earlier, there's no I in team. We all work together and we really love to applaud each other and, and be happy for each other and and be the person who, you know, holds out the hand to pull someone up with them and and just be open um, for the people around you. There's... Um, crazy massive amount of different people at work you know everyone's so different and and um brings with them their own sort of 
personalities and and skills and it's a beautiful place if you if you let it you know if you if you open yourself up to it and i guess that's what i'm saying here be open be patient and be humble uh and this is how i think you can get into the industry <clears throat> one of the things that i think you should 100 percent do is to create a linkedin profile yes. maybe today later on and just just connect with all the companies that you love you know ilm weta dnac npc follow them all you know what they all got to say what are they posting what they're doing what they're working on you know obviously what are at, at top somewhere there you know <laughs> staying local but um but it's interesting you know get immersed into into the the industry you know it's a very very small industry um Career, uh, create a, a profile on on what our effects is career website if you go to what effects.ci.nz and hit the careers button then you can create a profile and you can do that at any time you don't need you don't need a cv you don't need a reel just yet like just create your profile and set up some email filters that not email filters email preferences so when you know, when, for example, we open up the ATD program, hopefully next year again for the next intake, that you will be the one that will be emailed about that. Um, so that's something you can do today as well. Um, whoops, my laptop just wants to do something. Um, don't be shy. Um, just connect connect with me connect with other people that you see at what are effects that you find interesting or inspiring or that you hear about or want to know more about you know most people are pretty open to going like yeah sure you can be my friend um when you do do your real make it your standout piece you know like obviously have like your all your work on art station and stuff but or whatever other platform you want to choose but um have the reel be your one and a half minute long sort of pace where you put your best work on it and it doesn't always have to be finished it can be work in progress stuff as long as you're able to talk about it and talk to it and and you know when we ask you like oh yeah how did you derive at this you know interesting work piece at the end and and you'll be like well so I had this idea and it didn't quite work out so I pivoted and then I tried this and you know this is interesting to us um because it shows us that you have some of the competencies that I've talked about you know like thinking uh, critical thinking and problem solving um so that's super interesting to us um write your cv and cover letter do it this weekend why because if a job comes up and you want to apply for it you already have this you know you don't need to think about it much it's like oh yeah i've already written that and maybe you make the cover letter be a little bit more precise towards the the role that's coming up but at least you have something there and then you know i really think kim rickard's talk um was such a good one. I was so informative about what, um, you know, how to apply because she used to be a recruiter. And I feel like her intel was absolute gold. You know, she was so spot on with so many things she said. So so if you um, haven't seen it yet, go to Hossein's YouTube channel and, <laughs> and watch Sleep, that. Like and subscribe. <laughs> yes, exactly. And... Um, yeah so and that pretty much concludes my presentation and i really look forward Gorgeous. to seeing you on your journey in the future fantastic. and that's it <laughs> fantastic it was uh, well structured um clear and like uh comprehensive you you covered lots of things in one hour it's in, like mind-blowing so uh, as Thank usual, you. as you know, like you can ask me. So I hand this little mic to you to ask questions. Uh, online people, please write down your notes, your questions. If you have, we can have a Q&A for five minutes, five or two, 10 minutes. So anyone here might have any questions? Young? Yeah, yes, uh, we have Young coming to you, by the way. Hi. Summer internship. 
Ah, awesome. Hi, Jessica. Nice Hi. to see you again. Nice to see you again, yeah, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just did um interview last week with Mike and James, the second round. Oh, yes. You yeah, did yeah. the interview with Mike and James. Ah, cool. Yeah, yeah. So you're going they're, to Nigel. They're, yeah, they're so amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really um, amazing. Yeah. I just want to ask, like, after you participate in an ATD program, how the transfer go? Did you just apply for a role after you finish your pro program or you get to pick like whatever department you want to work through like later? Yeah, there's a few ways, really. I mean, if if a role comes up and you want to apply for it, you can apply for it at any time. You know, you, there's no minimum stay in the ATD department. We're happy for you. If you want to move on and be promoted somewhere else, like, great. That's awesome. Um, what usually the most common uh, pathway is that, say, if you are an ATD, like James, for example, he used to be an ATD, and um, he would be, um, you know, he would be working in lighting and and he would probably go like, oh, I really, really like this department. I really want to end up in lighting. And then lighting would go, we really like this guy, James. He's been doing like really, really well. We've got this project coming up. We need some more people. And so we then... Um, they the lighting department reaches out to us. We reach out to the lighting department, and then we work the we work on someone like James being promoted um, into the lighting department. So yeah, that's probably the most straightforward way. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Oh, there we are. Oh, do you want to like stop screen sharing so we see your beautiful face? Oh, sorry. Huh. Uh, you were talking about how you want to. Oh, okay. Okay. Hi. Hi. Um, you talked about how you want to change the culture of uh, VFX. So I was wondering how has that culture changed over the years, right, over yes. the last like ten years? Oh, it has a uh, good question. Um. Yeah. It has changed immensely. Um, you know, it was it it there's so much more thought and effort being put into um the culture that we have at work. You know, it used to be just um work on the project. I mean, it's always been a fun culture for sure, but it wasn't very talent driven. I should say, whereas now there's definitely a drive to make it um, a better workplace for people to um, have things going on at work that involves everyone um, networking with each other. Um, there's a lot more um, diversity, I suppose, a lot more um, events that drive forward diversity and network people with each other so yeah there's heaps i mean we've got we've got so many sports groups at work we have so many um you know we have things like um maternity um pay for example which wasn't a thing when i when i had my babies uh, or parental <laughs> <laughs> yeah missed out um but there's you know there's really there's a real drive to improve on all those things that matter to people. And I feel like it's a beautiful thing because at the end of the day, especially me being a woman, you know, like and 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 me wanting to have a family and having a family, I at that time, I didn't know whether I would ever be going back to the industry because it wasn't a place that made it very easy for working mothers um whereas that has changed greatly and and they're all positive changes in the right directions yeah but there's Almost, more improvement yeah, to be done yeah, for sure to be done, yeah yes yeah. <laughs> any other questions around uh online people okay awesome i think uh it was a um Oh, I have one little question. Is there any age restrictions for ATD? Uh, no, 
maybe 18. Oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the bracket? Is that what well, who's the old like like what's the age of the oldest person? Applied? Oh, there's definitely some more mature ATDs, like probably around 30, okay. I would say. So yeah, okay. it it so can be can be anyone. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. It was a it was a pleasure to host you. Uh, I think uh, let's have a big round of applause. So, <laughs> Jessica, that was very um, informative, very inspiring. You know, listening to your story. Um, you know, going through all these stages, always being resilient, always being um, you know patient, curious. The same things you said. Always keen to learn. I think these yeah. are the lessons we can learn. Uh, I think the biggest le lesson I learned myself is to speak and tell what you what's happening in your mind, communicate with the people. So yeah. like that helps. So um, thank you so much. And thank looking you. Looking forward to see you whenever you come to Oakland, pop in, and we'll we'll we would love to host you again. I would love to. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and good to see you all, and hopefully see you all in the future yes all right thank okay. you see Bye. ya take care